What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. Now in this video, we're going to talk about the residency interview day and we're going to break that down into fi the five components of it. And these are the time before your interview up until the day before, the night before your interview or the traditional pre-interview dinner, um, the morning of the interview, the interview day itself, and post-interview communication till you match. Um, I broke it down into these five components because I think it's important to think about them in this like segmented fashion and it just makes it easier to talk about in the videos. So we made a video and it should be here hopefully in the left hand column that talks about residency interview strategy. Once you start getting interviews, how do you make sure that you respond quickly to them and that you get the dates you want and how do you handle having multiple interviews that conflict? Um, we talked about that in the previous video, so watch that if, you're, if you haven't seen it yet or if you're curious about those topics, hopefully they help. In this video, we're gonna talk about now, okay, now it's interview time. What do you do? What's the strategy we're gonna implement and what's that like, you know? Knowing what's happening before you go do it just makes your life easier. So now it comes to, okay, you got your whole interview schedule planned out in your calendar. You're starting to go to interviews. Um, what's it like? So the very first thing you're gonna do is it's the day before the interview. You're traveling out there, you got your hotel book or you're driving, whatever it is. Think about it this way. The interview begins the day before the interview. Honestly, even whenever you start corresponding with email with people. You, not to sound like scary or weird, but you are being judged the moment you start replying back to them. Um, so always be common sense here, guys. Be smart, be professional, don't be rude. Um, don't ever be inappropriate, be polite. Um, always imagine your mom's watching you and you'll be fine. Uh, you know, that kind of strategy. Just always be a polite person and correspond appropriately. So that starts well before the interview. Pre-interview day, you're driving out, you're going to the hotel, be nice to everyone again. Just Imagine your mom's watching you. You never know if you do something stupid or silly. Um, people always talk about this. I never personally really saw too much of it, but who knows? Maybe some people do silly things. It could always get back to the admissions committee for residency, and that would suck if you did something stupid at a program you really wanted to go to. So day before the interview, get your stuff, um, you know, get yourself situated in the city that you're in um, before comes nighttime, which is the traditional pre-interview dinner. Now the pre-interview dinner is considered optional, I think, at almost all schools, but they are usually highly recommended. Um, I think pre-interview di dinners are amazing. They're so useful because what happens is the school usually invites you out. Um, they'll say, okay, the interview day is here on a Friday, but Thursday evening we're going to have a pre-interview dinner for all the applicants where you'll meet at this restaurant or bar and all the, you know, as many cur current residents as they can will be there for you guys to mingle, talk, eat, and kind of get a feel for the program and ask some of those questions that are easier to ask in a more casual setting than in the formal interview setting. I loved all of my pre-interview dinners. Uh, on the one hand, schools always take you to nice places, so having nice meals for free never hurts. Um, that's always fun. But more so, you really get a little bit of an insight into what are the residents like. You know, when you're sitting at a table or like at a bar area with different residents, you'll realize, are these people awkward? Are they normal? Are they people that I could see myself interacting with? Um, because realistically, you're going to be at a certain program for three plus years, depend, you know, three to seven, depending on what specialty you go into. You want to be around people that you're comfortable with, that you like, that you want to interact with. So pick a program um, that kind of has a good fit for you. And the pre-interview dinner gives you that insight. Um, I mean, I've seen cases where I was at a program and we were like at a nice fancy Italian restaurant and I was like, ooh, I love Italians, be fun. But the residents were so awkward, they were so weird. They were like, they didn't, you know, the communication between the residents and the friendships really weren't there. It was awkward. Within 15 minutes, I'm like, can I go home now? This is, uh, I don't like this. But on the other hand, there were some programs where like, we're at a restaurant and we're eating Mexican. I like Mexican too. Um, and you know, I'm having a great time. I'm chatting it up with the chiefs. I'm talking with the interns. We're just having a blast. You see the residents laughing and joking. That's somewhere that I fit in much more. So the pre-interview dinner gives you that insight into 
What's the social interaction between the residents? Do you fit into that program? And you can ask a bunch of questions about, you know, what's it like on call schedule? When do you get in? When do you get out? What kind of patients are you seeing? What are the attendings like? You know, all the questions that you may have that you don't feel comfortable asking on a formal interview day, now is your time. Um, so some warnings about the pre-interview dinner. Number one, um, alcohol is usually served at almost all, if not all, these dinners. Um, it's usually free. Um, don't go crazy. I, you know, I, I've seen it actually at two different dinners. Um, I interviewed a, a good amount, but only at two dinners I saw people taking it too far. Uh, I, I smile now because I think it was funny that it how do you do something so basic and mess it up? Um, you're at a formal dinner for the most part, you know, it, it's formal casual and you're just trying to be, you know, cordial and professional, but don't drink too much. That's just embarrassing. Uh, Cause then you start saying stupid things. Everyone can tell you've had a little too much. It just doesn't look good. So don't be one of that guy or girl who drinks too much cause it's just awkward, embarrassing and never looks good. But in, you know, you, one, you don't, don't think at all. You do not have to drink if you don't want to. Every dinner, there's always been one or two people I've noticed who are like, oh no, I'm okay, I don't wanna drink. No one cares, no one bats an eye. If you don't wanna drink, don't. But if you do, I would just recommend kind of pace yourself with everyone else. One or two drink max is kind of what I've noticed. That's what I always did. You don't need to drink that much. Um, it's usually free, I enjoy one or two drinks and just be social if you want, but don't take it overboard. Um, food wise, you can order whatever you want, they usually don't care. Um, attire wise, it is like kind of, it's not formal, so don't wear a tie, but usually every, what I noticed was a lot of guys just wore like collared shirts and slacks with no tie and like a sweater or jacket, and girls kind of wore a similar style, um, semi-professional look. So don't show up in jeans and sneakers because that, you know, usually you go to nice places for these dinners. Um, at the same time, don't show up in a suit. You'll be the only one feeling that awkward and professional. You wanna be casual. You wanna create a environment where you can talk to people. So that's the pre-interview dinner. I would say you should go to them as much as you can. Sometimes there is conflict in the schedules with, with other interviews and you can't, but I like them. You get to go to cool places and eat. You get to meet the residents and really kind of get a feel for what the program is like. Um, and that's just invaluable data, I think, when it comes to rank time. Are you a good fit for a program? And I think pre-interview dinner gave me a lot of that feel. Um, and you get to meet the residents, so when you go in on interview day, you kind of feel a little more comfortable, which can only help uh, with self-esteem or you know self-confidence on the interview day. All right, now comes the morning of the interview. Why am I making a thing about this? Why not just jump into the day of the interview? The reason is, well, life teaches you lessons. Um, so I did. So I'm, I'm going into neurology, and for neuro, you have to do a prelim year. And one of my friends is doing opto, and he had to do a prelim year as well. And we coincidentally got an interview at the same place, and our interview day was on the same day. So we were all excited. We drove up together, got a hotel. You know, we're in, you know, me and my friend are interviewing together. And he was like, "Hey, um, so like on your interviews the night before, do you like map out where you got to go and you know find the program and like what building got to go into?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, man. Like that would be horrible if we didn't know where to go." So luckily, we both had that same idea of the night before an interview, we always scout out where we need to be at the next morning so we drive to the hospital or the building you know ask security hey where is this building um, how do I get there etc so on interview morning you are not stressed out um, so on interview morning you know what you want to do is get up have your clothes and everything all set up already know where you're gonna go know how long it takes you to get there you've already done the drive you feel comfortable you're not gonna show up late and add unnecessary stress on interview day, which is already a stressful day. Um, and that's what we, why I think the night before or the morning of is really important because the night before you really should map out really quickly, go you know, physically drive out there from wherever your hotel or house is or whatever, um, and see where is the building, where do you park, talk to people, be like, can I park there, talk to security, what elevators do I take, etc. So you have at least a visual memory of one run through of how to get there in the morning. The reason that's important, um, every single interview, I don't know why, people show up late. Um, and sometimes life just gives you unnecessary challenges and what can you do? You gotta roll with the, you know, the punches. But if at, if at all necessary, 
able, skip those challenges, you know, map it out the night before, have your clothes ready the night before. So when you wake up in the morning, you get up, you know what time to wake up in the morning that takes into account preparation, getting ready and commuting out um, so that you're not late. Because every time I saw it, there was always one person late almost at every single interview. I'm sure it's not detrimental to their whole application, but when you show up late, it's, it's a weird feeling, it's in your head, it's not fun. So better not to do that by more pre-planning. But again, if the morning kind of throws you um, oddballs, then you know, you're gonna show up late, what are you gonna do? But you know, just going back to that story of me and my friend, we both like planning out the night before and it took us over an hour to find the building we were trying to go interview at. And we're two pretty intelligent guys. We were we, we drove 15 minutes, really, we were only 15 minutes away from the building uh, at our hotel and it took us almost an hour to find it just because the parking was so confusing and the maps didn't really make sense. And it's a big hospital, we're reasonably intelligent, but it took us some time. Uh, maybe we were tired at night, who knows, but that would have really sucked if we were trying to do all that work in the morning. So if you want, plan the night before or make your morning easier. All right, now it's interview day. You did all that stuff, you got to the interview, you're there about 15 minutes early, you've already parked, etc. Now you're walking up to the uh, building where they're gonna you know, have the interviews and have their little talk. Uh, traditionally, when you get there, they'll always give you a breakfast. Um, you, know, you can attend grand rounds, morning report, they'll have it all set up for you. You just show up on interview day. Don't worry about what's gonna really happen. Um, sometimes they'll email you who you will be interviewing with the night before. Um, I would always ask at the pre-interview dinner, like, hey, who traditionally interviews? Um, just because I like to know, is it the chair, the PD, just a bunch of uh, junior attendings, faculty and staff, who's there? because um, it gives you a sense of who you're gonna be getting ready for the next day. So if you don't get an email, ask the night before or ask the morning of, just so you have a bit of a heads up and you can search who they are and kind of tailor questions that are more meaningful to you to learn more about the program from people who can really answer them well. So now, you know, it's interview day, they gave you some breakfast, they gave you a talk, you might have attended some event, ground rounds or whatever, and now they start the interviews. All interviews, for the most part, I've noticed are the same style. Um, you know, you'll meet with a chair or a PD or both. You'll meet with a couple um, attendings who are faculty, and that's about it. Uh, not that many interviews. Um, I've had as little as three to as many as eight in one day, so there is a range, and that's within all one specialty. Uh, prelim, I've noticed I get less interviews, and that's probably because it's prelim and we're only there for one year, and they may care less, um, versus your core categorical, they may be more interested. So there is a range of how many people you'll interview with, but interviews in and of themselves, at this point, I'm sure you guys are all very well prepared for. You know what's gonna happen. You should definitely be preparing without a doubt um, on interview day about the questions they're gonna ask or if they want stories. But here are a few important ones that I just noticed that I'm gonna share. One, everyone's gonna ask you, why do you want to come to this program? And in particular, if it's a competitive program, you better have a good answer. I would say you should have a good answer at all programs but everyone wants to know, why do you want to come here? I have limited spots, a bunch of people applied, why take you? Um, and that's, you without a doubt are gonna be asked that question, why us? Second, they're gonna ask you probably why this specialty? Um, they'll ask you a variety of questions from your application, so make sure you know your application really well. Um, I got asked some minutia questions on my application at some schools. Like they were breaking down the dates and trying to figure out what I was doing, and you know, I put together my application honestly, so it was easy, I just explained it, but geez, man, some people really get in there, so make sure you know your application really well, because when that person started qu you know, quizzing me on all the details, I was like, hold on, let me think real quick. What? I, no one ever cared enough about these details. Um, so make sure you know your application. Um, they're gonna always ask you, uh, sorry, they're always gonna ask you, what questions do you have for me? So why us, why this specialty, and what questions do you have for me? Without a doubt, have solid answers for all of those. The what questions do you have for me or this program? Don't make them too generic. Ask really thoughtful questions. This is your time to learn about the school and see if it's a good fit for you. You're gonna spend the next three to seven years there. Make it a good program. Make sure your training's solid. Um, so think about that beforehand. Don't just go in with generic questions and it's lame if you have generic questions. Let's just be honest here. Um, and that, so that'll be the interview itself. Um, they may ask you some questions about like, what do you do for fun? Or tell me about an interesting patient, tell me about a challenging patient. But these are all very generic questions that you can Google and prepare for the residency application process. 
Um, so that's the interview itself. You know, be formal, take the card of whoever you contact, so at least you have their contact information, um, and then politely leave. Again, the whole day, imagine your mom's watching you, be polite, be professional, use common sense. So now the interview's over, now we're on stage five, which is now post-interview communication, till match. Um, and I sent a thank you email to every single person who ever interviewed me, whether they were chair, PD, attending, um, chief, whoever. Um, it's polite, I think you should. Um, that's completely up to you though, not everyone does. Um, I just sent email because I, you know, I didn't want to do the whole paper thing. Um, but that's completely up to you. I also uh, sent a thank you email to the coordinators who set up all the appointments because realistically, I think they do so much work that you should you know, let them know that you're thankful for coordinating all your work and getting your whole interview day put together. So I, you know, it's just polite to do so and I think you should. Um, so that's my thank you e emails. Um, now comes another question. And that, that's honestly all you do for post-interview communication. Send the thank you email. They'll they will or they may not reply. Don't take it too much if they don't reply. They probably get a ton of thank you emails and they're probably busy. Some people do reply. I don't know what to make of it, honestly. It's a mix of everything. Um, okay, so that was those were the five phases. The day before the interview or you know before you get the email until you start. The night before the pre-interview dinner, go ask questions, learn about the program, don't go too wild. Uh, the morning, make sure you mapped out the stuff before, the night before so you can easily get there. Interview day, we gave you some coverage of it and sending thank you emails and correspondence. Now comes a little bit more of a sensitive topic. All right, what if I didn't get an interview from a program that I really wanted to and now it's nearing the end of the cycle or it's mid cycle or whatever, what do I do? Well, here's what I've noticed. This is all my never humble and biased opinion, so take it with two grains of salt, you know, not, not just one grain of salt. Um, here's what I think you could do, run it all biased, you know, some attendings or some seniors. Um, before you do it, of course, just kind of talk to people, but this is just my advice. Number one option you have is you can email the PD directly yourself saying, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'm super interested in your program, here's why, you know, I really would love to come in for an interview, please consider me, whatever. So you could email the PD yourself. You could, or talk to your own program director and be like, hey, I really want to go interview here, can you help me? Can you try to get me an interview and be like, can you help me out here? Um, they may be able to help you and they could maybe talk to the PD. Again, talk to someone and see if that's a good thing to do or not for you. Um, third, you could talk to an attending or um, that is from that institution or trained at that institution and be like, hey, I really wanted to interview where you were trained at. Could you help me maybe get an interview? Like, I really want to go there. Um, I don't know why they're not talking to me, but I really want to have a chance. Um, so those are three options that I think you could try. Emailing the PD yourself, talking to your own PD and seeing if they can reach out, or talking to an attending that trained at the institution you're interested at getting an interview and seeing if they could reach out. Um, I don't know any other options except for those three, but if you want, you can try those. Um, talk to people again who are above you and run those by them and then they can tailor away uh, based on your application and where you are in the cycle to say what's the best strategy for you to take because if you just sit there and do nothing, you, you most likely will just never get an interview. You might, um, or but if you're a little more proactive, that's in your favor because programs are gonna see, oh, this guy actually wants it. You know, Let's see what he's made of. Maybe he is a great fit for us. Um, so get out there, fight for what you want. Don't just sit passively on the sidelines. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We talked a lot about the interview residency day and also how to get interviews if you haven't received one yet. Um, leave any questions you have down below in the comments. Uh, put questions on Facebook and Twitter. As a community, we'll all try to help each other and answer each other's questions. Um, and as always, guys, enjoy your studies.